So you want to get better at Arc Nova. I get it. I've been there. I had a friend that would dominate me at Arc Nova. They would beat me again and again and again, and I could not get a single win. I was so desperate to win that I had coaches teach me how to play Arc Nova at a competitive level. And only then could I take one game from them. Although to be fair, he's never played with me again after that video. So maybe not the best strategy for keeping friends. But in the comments of that video, I couldn't help but notice one trend. You guys all want to see the coaching session. Of course you do. You all have that Eric you want to defeat and I'm here to grant you that victory. So I've summed up that coaching session, all of my experience playing the game and whatever I could find on line to make this the ultimate Arc Nova guide. And if you like this video, consider subscribing to the channel. One of the best ways to learn Arc Nova is by watching others play and I stream this game. So it's just another step in your journey of becoming a better Arc Nova player. First, let's cover some general tips. Arc Nova is an action efficiency game at its core. How efficient can you be with your limited number of actions to generate the highest possible score? Ideally, you're doing something meaningful every time you take an action. If you find yourself frequently passing turns or taking bad moves, you're playing the game inefficiently and it will absolutely hurt your overall score. Planning ahead is vital in Arc Nova to ensure that you are giving yourself something to do on future turns. In general, that means a few things. First, it means having enough money to build enclosures and play animals, having good sponsor and animal cards in hand to play, having extra workers available to play an association action when available, and lastly, upgrading your action cards so that every time you play them, you're getting a stronger effect. 90% of the game revolves around these four things, and if you can do these things, you will by virtue be a much stronger player. Another tip is that sometimes I hear people saying that Arc Nova is like playing multiplayer solitaire, but that can't be farther from the truth. You always need to keep an eye on your opponent's order of actions, especially the position of association. You don't want someone taking that partnership or university you need before you can. Additionally, you want to be able to tell when the opponent's going to cause a break on you, when they're able to snap a strong card out of the row before you, and what general strategies your opponents are going for so you can deny them synergistic cards. And just a final note, as we dive into strategy here, just keep in mind that these are general guidelines. The beauty beautiful thing about Arc Nova is how insanely flexible different strategies can be depending on which cards you get. So take all of these tips as early rules to follow, but the best Arc Nova players will know when to break these rules, and that's just something that comes with experience. So first let's talk about the maps. It's actually a pretty easy decision because you're dealt two different maps and you have no other information to go off of. So you're pretty much just picking the map based on which one is stronger. First up is the weakest map in the game, Observation Tower. Every time you flip an enclosure adjacent to the observation tower, you're gonna gain two extra tickets. So first of all, the ability of the map isn't even that good. It's a little awkward to build around. You have to build in these enclosures here, right next to it, and it can take a lot of time to set that kind of thing up. Additionally, the spaces you have to build are just very awkwardly positioned. It's hard to fit a lot of good enclosures on this board, especially because these building restriction zones really tie up a lot of the middle of the map. Additionally, the rock and the water spaces are pretty split on this map, so it can be hard to play a flexible strategy as different animals come. And lastly, the placement bonuses just aren't very good on this map. The one reputation and five money are probably the best ones on here, but it doesn't have something game breaking like a lot of the other maps have. And that's why it's the worst map. Okay, next up we have park restaurant. And on this map, you gain one extra income per round for every spot you have covered next to the park restaurant. Also, just not a really good map. At max, you're getting, what, five extra money per round. And if you think about how awkward it is to build around this, you have to build out from here, go up, go around, go down. And it just, it takes a lot of time if you don't have some good sponsor cards to cover it up quickly. And even if you do cover it up quickly, you're only getting five extra money per round. Additionally, the placement bonus on this map aren't that great either. You get some money, you get some reputation, but there's nothing game breaking on this map. And lastly, the map is just very segmented. The areas for big enclosures are very spread out. And if you think about how hard it is to get to each one, Let's say you start down here to build a big enclosure. You now have to work your way over here, over here. I mean, I guess there's a big one here as well, but it's just very snaky and hard to build with. So not only is the bonus not that good, it's hard to build on and the map bonuses aren't that great. So this is definitely the second worst map in the game. So next up we have Ice Cream Parlor and now the maps are starting to get pretty good. Ice Cream Parlor is definitely a playable map. Every time you cover up one of these kiosk spot, you get a free kiosk, which is pretty good income generation already. But then if you're able to cover up every one of these kiosks, you get one extra money per round for each kiosk. So on this map, you can actually get your income up pretty high early in the game. Additionally, the placement bonuses on this map are much better. In addition to just having these kiosks, you also have two reputation that's very close to each other. It is not hard at all to put down two reputation bonuses very quickly. And then you you can take the two reputation university to get your first card upgrade. Also, the different starting spots on this map are very flexible. You can start here if you need money. You can start here if you need reputation. You can start up here if you need a card early. Unfortunately, it does suffer like the other map did where the water and the rocks are very split apart from each other. So it can make building around these different adjacencies much harder. And the other awkward thing is if you're getting a lot of kiosks and you want to put a lot of pavilions next to those kiosks, you can run out of spots to play different sanctuaries. So something to keep in mind.
mind. You're going to want to plan your builds well on this map. And now next up, we have Commercial Harbor. And if you build on this spot right here, once during your turn, you can discard a card from your hand for three money at any time. So this is a great map for resource generation. It can generate you a lot of money pretty quickly, and you can just usually build out of this corner to get that bonus online really quick. Additionally, if you look at how open this map is compared to some of the other maps, there's plenty of room to build. It's a lot more flexible. The water and rock is next to each other. And this is the first map we've seen with an actual good placement bonus. This is the only map in the game with a 2x spot, which allows you to play a single action twice, which can be insanely powerful if you sync it up at the right time. Obviously, make sure no one's going to cause the break on you because it disappears during the break. But if you can get off a sick double association, get two workers sent out in one move, Oh, there's just so much efficiency to be had there. And also, if you are able to get this commercial hub hooked up early, it turns your cards action into an income generation action as well. Because now with those useless cards you're getting, you can sell them for three money a pop and just get a ton of money generated. Oh, and I also forgot one of the bonuses of this map is getting a university, which is a really good tempo play. Normally, a university requires a four strength association action to get out. And with this map, you just get it for free. So the next map we have is Hollywood Hills. And every time you cover up one of these H bonuses, you're going to reveal cards from the deck and add the first sponsor card to your hand. And once you're able to cover up all three of these eight spots, each sponsor card requires one less power to be played. I think this map is amazing. Sponsor cards are so good in this game. They're some of the best cards available. They can give you huge advantages, especially if you hit the right ones. So there's definitely some variance with this map if you draw a bunch of sponsor cards and you get ones that kind of suck. But if you hit with this map, it can be so big. Additionally, covering up two of the H's right off the beginning is very easy to do. And if you look at how open this board is, this board is much easier to build on. Unfortunately, it is still separated between the water and the rocks, which can make planning a little bit harder. But still, compared to those other maps, this one's way more open. Additionally, the places you can start is pretty flexible. If you need some early money, you can start building up here. If you need the early reputation, you can build down here. And of course, if you want to roll for some good sponsor cards, you start down here, work your way through. And once you get build upgraded, you can build your way this way. It's a really fun board. I highly recommend playing it. It's not quite in that top tier of boards yet, but it definitely gets the job done. And also this bonus of getting a partnership zoo is very powerful. So these next three maps are the best maps. You should always be picking them if they come up. They're just so much stronger than the other maps. It's insane. First up, we have the Research Institute. And if you're able to cover up this spot here, each time you play an animal card, you get to ignore a condition of your choice, which makes it much easier to get out some of the strong animals in this game. Additionally, now we're starting to see some of the broken placement bonuses. You can get a university by building on this spot. That's so incredibly good, especially when you consider you can just build out of here to get a reputation or build out of here to get a money. And then you're maybe what, two build actions away from getting it again. And if you can get a sponsor card that covers these spots up pretty nicely, you can get there even faster. If you go for a university with your first association action, and then you're able to build your way up to this placement bonus to get a second university, you've just gotten yourself a card upgrade in the first round. It's so freaking good. Also, if you're able to get two universities in the opening round and you get this reputation bonus, now you just need one more reputation before you get a second upgraded card from the reputation track. Additionally, if we look at how open this map is for building, it's so much easier to build on this map than some of the other maps we were looking at earlier. It's just so much more open. And lastly, this bonus this right here is awesome. During every break, it allows you to move two cards back to the first position. So this can allow you to shift your actions around and make your turn so much more efficient for the next round. So as you can see, this map is very good, which only goes to show you how much more broken the other two maps are if they're above this one. So next up, we have outdoor areas and each building adjacent to this gate right here has two extra capacity, which first of all, is just a strong ability. This map is already very open to build on in the first place, but now effectively making all of these spots around the gate an extra two capacity is just broken. If if you have the upgraded build action, you can build a three here and a two here, and you've effectively just built a five size enclosure and a four size enclosure in one move. That is insane action efficiency. Additionally, one of the strongest parts of this map is that we have another broken placement bonus. You can build here and then right over to here with just two two size enclosures and grab a partnership zoo. We're going to get to this a little bit later, but getting an extra worker in this game is huge. So if you're able to get two different sponsorship projects in the first round, the first action of the second round, you get another sponsorships action. You you've just unlocked yourself a second worker. That's how good this map is. And of course, getting a conservation point is one of the bonuses. It's pretty good when you're trying to cross as well. But yeah, this map is insane. Which brings us to the strongest map in the game, Silver Lake. This map is in its own tier. It is so much better than every map I just showed you. There are no weaknesses. It's an awesome map. And the craziest thing is, there's no special ability. <laughs> You're just getting what you see. First of all, all of this money around the lake is so good in the early game. It allows you to build your enclosures for free. And that early money allows you to play more animals than you'd normally be able to, which allows you to get your income higher. 
and can just snowball in and of itself. Additionally, there's two reputation that's relatively easy to build to early on. And if you look at this map, it's also very open, good for building a lot of different structures that won't limit you too much with the amount of narrowness in the map. And lastly, the creme de la creme of this map, the reason it is so broken, when you gain that bonus, you get an extra action. We're gonna go over why that's such a big deal in the end game section, but getting an extra action in this game is nuts. And this map just gives it to you for free. If you see the Silver Lake map, just grab it. It's better than every other map. Okay, so here's the ranking of all the different maps with the worst map being up here and the best map being down here. Feel free to take a screenshot so it's easy to remember. Now that we have the best starting map possible, let's get into our opening hand. J-Dog is one of the best Ark Nova players out there. And he once said that this game isn't really about animals, it's about politics. And that's because the association is so insanely strong in this game. I'll talk more about the association action later, but just realize that getting a second worker is super important in this game and allows you to take two association actions per round. So when you're deciding which four of the eight cards to keep in the early game, Think about which combinations can enable you to get that second worker the fastest. The easiest way is usually sponsoring an early conservation project. And that's because all of the playable maps has a worker as one of the possible bonuses you can get. So at the start of the game, make sure you're looking at these base conservation projects to see which one you can sponsor the fastest. A partnership zoo plus a single different continent icon from hand is enough to meet the minimum requirement to sponsor Europe, for example. Or if you start out with a different conservation project in hand, sometimes that can be the easiest way to get that second worker. Or if you have the cards for it, rushing reputation can also get you a second worker. It'll require a lot of reputation, but sometimes you just get dealt a good hand in the beginning and you can rush it. Additionally, the Talented Communicator sponsor card is insanely good and will warrant upgrading sponsors early so you can get that second worker out ASAP. There are other ways to get a second worker as well. I don't have time to cover all of the different possible combinations, but just try to keep this in mind as an early goal in the back of your head. And then some additional things to keep in mind when you're picking your starting cards, try to play around your end games. For example, if you have small animals, maybe you should keep a few small animals to play in the beginning. Also, sources of early income is vital. You can't keep your engine running without money, so if you have sponsor cards that give extra income or efficient animals to play to increase appeal, they may be worth keeping. And try not to worry about the composition of sponsors versus animals in your hand. Sometimes it's correct to keep all sponsors or all animals. You need to stay flexible to the strongest strategy. And don't be afraid to keep unplayable cards if they're very strong and help with the overall strategy, even if they don't align with conservation projects. I'll be going over some of the overpowered cards later in the video. And lastly, make sure to take a peek at the conservation track bonuses. If there are really strong bonuses like a free university or a free partnership, it might be worth rushing the conservation track as quickly as possible to get them. These bonuses are absolutely broken and you wanna make sure you're denying them to your opponents. And I'm not gonna discuss every end game card in detail. Just know that these are the easiest ones to play around and these are generally the hardest ones to play around. So if you're gonna pick one to play around in the beginning, try to pick the top ones or the ones I haven't shown on screen. The bottom ones are trash and usually not worth going for unless you get a very specific hand. Okay, now let's talk about the various actions of the game. And these are pretty important because this is how you actually interact with the game as the player. First, we're gonna talk about the upgrade order. First of all, the general order I upgrade things is gonna be build, then association, then cards, then animals. If if I have a really good sponsor card in my hand, I'll upgrade sponsors. If not, then I'm just gonna upgrade animals because there are some really strong animals in the game that require the animals upgrade. Of course, which upgrades you get and in which order is gonna be very dependent on the game state, but this is a general overview. If you need to get a third partner zoo, or if you need to make a donation to make a critical conservation track bonus, then upgrade association first. If you played all the cards in your hand and now you're left with no cards and you just really need to start restocking, maybe you upgrade cards. There's a case to be made for upgrading every one of these cards first, but in general, like I said, it's gonna be built Build, association cards, animals, and then you can swap out animals for sponsors and vice versa. First, let's talk about the build action. If you are not close to filling up your zoo, don't take pointless build actions to fill it up for the seven tickets. I promise you that the amount of money you're gonna have to spend to fill up your zoo is not gonna be worth those seven tickets. Additionally, let's say you have a build action, but you don't have any animals in hand to guide what enclosures you should build. Most of the time, you're gonna be pretty safe building a two size enclosure. A lot of the animals in the game are size two, so you can usually make good use of them. When you build the aviary, you wanna make sure it's next to water and rock if possible. And you want to build it next to the rock and water because you want to be able to play either of the eagles if you happen to come across them. Don't be the person that put their aviary next to rock only because you'll be very sad if you end up drawing the bald eagle. That being said, if you have to choose between rock and water, always put it next to the rock because the other aviary birds with adjacency requirements are both rock birds. If you're building the reptile house, generally it's not considered to be as strong as the birdhouse, just because birds are overall stronger in this game than reptiles. But if you do, just make sure you're putting it next to a water spot. And that's because all of the big reptile house animals require water adjacency. So if you don't put it next to water, you're gonna be pretty sad. 
Now you may be wondering, why do we upgrade build first? And that's because believe it or not, build is one of the weakest actions in the game. You want to do it as little as possible. So by upgrading it, you're able to be more efficient with your build actions and take the action less frequently. Being able to take a single level five build action and throw down a level two enclosure, a kiosk, a pavilion, and a level one enclosure all at the same time, that's like four different actions you just accomplished all at once. It's incredibly good. And of course, it also allows you to build on these restricted spaces, which just frees up your flexibility with building on the map. It's just a really solid upgrade overall. And if you're not sure what to upgrade, just upgrade build. You'll thank yourself later. Okay, so next up, we have Association. And remember how I was just saying that build is the worst action in the game? Well, Association is the best action in the game. And that's because the developers of Arc Nova made this board so freaking powerful. The first thing you need to decide when taking your Association actions is, are you going to rush the universities or are you going to rush the partnership zoos? And the reason you generally want to choose one or the other is because once you get the second one, that's when you get your first card upgrade. And like I said earlier, getting card upgrades is so powerful because it makes your actions even more efficient. And the name of the game in Ark Nova is making things more efficient. As for which one you go for first, that's highly going to depend on the board state. So just try to stay flexible. If you need reputation, go for the universities. If you need a sponsorship project or maybe an extra worker, maybe you go for the partnership zoos. It really depends on the game. As for the partnership zoo, just remember that these icons count as icons in your zoo, which makes them very helpful for going after these different conservation projects. Usually you're going to want to be going after the partnership zoo where you have a couple animals or maybe you're playing towards a conservation project. But if you're not after a specific partnership zoo, here's the power level of the different zoos based on the strength and total number of animals in the deck with that continent icon. So the best one's going to be Asia. Second best is going to be the Americas. The third best one is Africa. The fourth best one is going to be Europe. And lastly, the worst one in the game is Australia. Keep in mind, this is only relative to each other. All the partnership zoos are still pretty good, but this is the general ranking of them in a vacuum. So now with regard to the university, I feel like I keep saying this, but obviously it's going to depend on the board state. But in a vacuum, the best university is going to be the two reputation university, then the hand size university, and then finally the two research icon university. And just remember, if you're able to get three reputation from the universities, you just need one more before you're able to get that upgraded card, which is pretty powerful. It results in you getting two upgraded cards when you consider the fact that after you get your second university, you also get a card upgrade. The only downside is you're getting that second upgrade at the cost of getting that extra worker a little bit slower. Okay, so now we've talked about the partnership zoos, we've talked about the universities. It's time to talk about the strongest action in the game, sponsoring a conservation project. Like I said, it's the fastest way to get that second worker. And as you move on in the game, every one of these conservation track points is gonna be worth three appeal, which is just a lot of value. With regard to the power level of the different conservation projects, these are by far the easiest two to do. It is very easy to get five different continent icons and it's very easy to get five different animal category icons. So if you see these in the row, really try to save up and speed towards getting the maximum level on these. Also, if you're planning on playing a conservation project from hand, please just make sure that your opponent doesn't get a bigger benefit than you do. If you play research to get the two conservation points and your opponent is sitting with five research icons congratulations because you just played yourself and honestly while i'm at it if you're at five and they're at five and they can get this one the net difference in these two is only one conservation point so if you have a different project you can play maybe consider playing that one this is just a general reminder to be looking at your opponent's boards during the game. It comes up way more than you'd think. Now, with regards to the different bonuses you get by sponsoring these projects, in general, the worker is going to be the best one to get early. And then the second best one is either going to be snapping or the income, depending on whether or not you need extra cards to play or if you need money. Usually I end up getting the money first, but if there's a crazy card in the row and I want to deny my opponent, sometimes I will go after the snapping first. And lastly, the reason it's so important to upgrade this association action is because first of all, it'll allow you to start making these donations. And in general, the two money donation and the five money donation are going to be good value. But once you get to seven and 10, the value really drops. And if you don't really need that conservation point to get a bonus from the track, you're probably better off spending that money elsewhere. And additionally, the ability to play multiple different workers with one association action can be pretty strong in the mid game and in the end game, especially if you have a couple of extra X tokens to spend. Being able to pump like three or four X tokens in to sponsor a conservation project and maybe grab a university as a part of your final move can really help you amp up that final total score. Okay, so next up, let's talk about about this cards action. There's always going to be inherent luck in Arc Nova based on which cards you get in the beginning and how powerful they are. But the best way in this game to minimize luck is to draw a lot of cards. If you're cycling through the deck, you're going to draw better cards more frequently than your opponent. So you always want to try and get good value out of your cards throughout the game. Also, don't be afraid to snap a powerful card out of the row. One really powerful card is better than three random cards from the deck. And like I said earlier, usually I'm upgrading cards third or fourth, depending on if I need to start drawing more cards. Being able to snap at a lower action power is very helpful for denying your opponent opponent's cards and for getting you much better cards and being able to snap from reputation range can be absolutely huge sometimes. It can really improve your options throughout the game. 
And of course, upgrading your cards allows you to get past this critical threshold, which unlocks some new bonuses from the reputation track. Being able to get two extra conservation points, some card draw, some X's, it can be really relevant in who wins the game. Okay, next up, we're gonna talk about animals. Just try to make sure you have an animal in hand to play once it starts getting up into the higher power levels. Upgrading this is really nice because it can really help you start getting animals out. If you're getting later in the game and you have a lot of money to spend, being able to push out two animals back to back at a lower power range is just really good. Having to wait until you get all the way up to five to play two animals can just take way too long in the end game. Additionally, that extra reputation you get by playing this at level five can also just be really good value throughout the game. And of course, the animals action is good because it lets you play a lot of the really strong animals in this game. Just trust me, if you get late in the game and you end up drawing one of these elephants, you're going to be pretty upset with yourself if you can't play it because you haven't upgraded your animals action. And now lastly, we have the sponsors action, which is obviously good for getting out sponsors cards, which are some of the best cards in the game. But otherwise, it's just a little bit underwhelming when it's upgraded. Being able to get a little bit more money or being able to play sponsor cards a little bit faster, it's just not that great. Sure, if you have one of the insanely strong sponsor cards that requires upgraded sponsors, then by all means upgrade it. But otherwise, it's just not that good. And don't worry, I will be going over those overpowered sponsor cards at the end of the video. And of course, there's the forgotten sixth option, which is the X token action, which basically just lets you move one of your actions back to the one spot to gain an X. Obviously, it's not ideal, but don't be afraid to use this action. It can be more helpful than you think. It can set yourself up for stronger plays in the future, and it's better to get an X than wasting an action on something that you really didn't want to do. Okay, now let's talk about the end game. One of the most explosive and exciting parts of Ark Nova. First of all, being the one that actually crosses in the end game can be bad because it gives every other opponent an extra action on you. And an extra action in the late game of Ark Nova can result in a huge swing of points. That's why many of the best players in this game will try to get as close as possible to crossing without actually crossing. Then when they do finally cross, they'll try to cross by the widest margin possible to get the highest possible score. So that means you need to get a ton of points in a single round. So now you may be asking, well, how do I get so many points in one round? And the answer to that is extra actions. Imagine if you were able to play two chunky animals for a bunch of appeal, and then you were able to support a huge conservation project in one round. It would enable you to cross by a huge margin. So now you have to think, which animals in the game give an extra action? And the answer to that are these three beasts right here. The three best animals in the game, because they allow you to play a strong animal action followed up with an association action afterwards which can just give you a ton of points to cross with and now you're probably realizing why silver lakes is such an insane map because it gives you a guaranteed extra action at the end of the game so you can take a strong association action and follow it up with two big animals it's such a gross combination now with that being said if you're beating your opponent by a wide margin or maybe they don't have the money or the cards they need to have a strong final action if you can catch your opponent off guard by crossing early even if it's not by a big margin that's usually enough to just win the game right there or on the converse if they have a bunch of money and a conservation projects ready to go, but they need a few turns to get all that stuff online. If you end the game quickly, you deny them a lot of those points. So just don't be afraid to catch your opponent off guard by crossing early. With all that being said, the end game is one of the most exciting and challenging moments in the game of Ark Nova and it requires a lot of planning. But believe me, when you hit those big end game combination turns, nothing else feels better. It's absolutely intoxicating. Okay, and now it's time for the overpowered card speed round. First up, let's go over the animals. We already talked about these three, the three strongest animals in the game because they give you extra actions. If you see them, it's usually worth picking them up because it can help you set up for that giant end game move. Next up, we have the sloth bear and the raccoon, both with the ability to boost the association action. And this can be a critical ability in the mid and late rounds when you're trying to pump out as many conservation projects as possible. These are extremely efficient animals and highly valuable. Plus they have a lot of good icons on them. And here we have the infamous elephants. They are extremely powerful and high value animals. Not only do they give you a bunch of appeal and a reputation or a conservation point, but they also give you two final scoring cards. And if you draw a good one, it can give you a ton of points. And the most important thing about those points is that they don't result in you crossing. So they can enable even higher end game scores. I usually snap these up whenever I see them. Just make sure you have the time and resources to actually get them played. And next up, we have the rhinos. Being able to grab an unused base conservation project can be so big. It can let you take those easy conservation projects like species diversity or animal diversity I was talking about earlier. And then you save those conservation projects for the end game to cross and you get to get an even more insane finish. Next up, we have the New Zealand fur seal, which can be really good if you can get it down early because remember those extra workers can be insane early on. Okay, next up we have the Tigers and the Panda. And honestly, these are just insanely high value cards and they score a lot of points when you play them. Of course, you have to be able to meet the requirements for them, which might not be easy a lot of the times, but if you get these down, they're just so valuable. And finally, you're gonna see why the birds are so good in this game. We've already gone over the Eagles, but posturing is another really good ability that can let you get down kiosks and pavilion in the early game and build up your income really fast. Perception allows you to dig through the deck and get the cards that you really need, which is just an insanely strong ability. And they're really not expensive birds to play. And lastly, we have the Scavenging Birds, which are like the Perception Birds, but 
instead of digging through the deck, you're digging through the discard pile, which is usually a little bit worse because you're digging through the stuff that other people didn't want. But it is still nice to be able to pick something that's potentially more valuable out of a large selection of cards. Okay, next up we have the overpowered sponsor cards. And first up we have Release of Patents, a pretty easy to play five call sponsor card that can get you three conservation points extremely early. Hell, you could just get the two science icon university and then play this round one to get an early round one card upgrade. Okay, next up is the side entrance, which is insanely strong in the early game. It's one of the best early game sponsor cards you can get. I pretty much always keep it if it's available. First of all, it doesn't have to be next to your existing building, so you can build it across the map and grab a helpful bonus. And additionally, it can generate an insane income, and it can be worth spanning out level one build actions again and again to get it online. Look at this combination, for example. It'll generate an extra 15 income per round. It's absolutely broken. And if you somehow manage to find this with an engineer, you have a golden combination that allows you to pump out the kiosk faster, and they both have the same end game bonus. You're so you're double as incentivized to fill out that zoom map. And here's federal grants. It's pretty much always good. It gives you an extra three income, a science tag, and it's an easy to achieve end game conservation point. It's just too good to pass up most of the time. The archeologist is one of the most broken sponsor cards in the game, especially with the right map. It can enable you to get double partnerships or triple universities on turn one, just by spam covering all the other placement bonuses. Or it allows you to just farm a bunch of reputation if that's what you need. It is almost always worth the keep and you can develop some crazy strategies around it. Next up, we have the talented community Communicator. I've already talked about this card. Getting an extra worker early is extremely good, and it gives you an endgame conservation point. What's not to like? Veterinarian is a really strong sponsor card, and it feels like they just kept adding good things onto it over and over again. First of all, they make it so sponsoring a conservation project now only requires a four strength association action, which is really good in and of itself. But on top of that, they decided to give this a science icon. They made it so it gives you money based on how many universities you have, and it gives you an endgame conservation point if you have three universities. It's such high value, and I cannot believe that this thing only costs four. So next up, we have the breeding sponsors, and these make it way easier to support the base conservation projects and they provide some end game value as well which is usually pretty easy to achieve if you're playing correctly explorer is awesome if you can get this down before you played a lot of the different animal and continent tags it generates so much value and it's worth rushing out if you get it early and here we have was a special assignment so this is a mid to end game sponsor card and if you plan around it well it can generate you a ton of extra appeal i've played with people that just play the sponsor card and pump out large animals over and over again and just close out the game so fast absolutely worth the snap if you see it there are a lot of other good sponsor cards as well, but I felt like these ones are really the most powerful ones. If you want to learn more about Arc Nova and how to really play it effectively, check out the playlist on screen now featuring all of the Arc Nova content I've made. Additionally, it is absolutely worth checking out J-Dog's YouTube channel. He's an amazing player. Him and Darcella taught me almost everything I know about this game, and I'll have a link in the description of the video. Thank you for watching, and have a wonderful day.